Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and today's video I am going to get ready and just do some basic makeup that I've been loving doing the past couple of weeks like for my work and stuff so it's gonna be a pretty boring but it's gonna be a little bit more amped up at least that's what I'm thinking um, so if you like that like the video dislike it if you don't like that by the way what I have noticed is that YouTube have removed so you can't see how many people have disliked your video I can obviously see how many people have disliked my video but what I can see is that the dislikes has gone down now I would love to be that kind of person that is like Oh my god, that's so great because I'm doing amazing, but I'm sure that has to do with the fact that you, YouTube has um, made so you can't see it. And I just don't really like that, actually. Like, yes, of course, it's nice not to spread hate, but I feel like being critiqued in your way of doing videos is not the way... Like, I think that you should be able to dislike and everyone should be able to see it. But that's just me. They come from a good place when they're doing that, but I feel like it just makes everything wrong because everyone should be able to express themselves. And I feel like they kind of remove that in a way. But again, that's just me. I know a lot of people like it. <laughs> a lot of people, they get really, really anxious and they get so sad when they get dislikes. And I totally get it. I was like that in the beginning as well. I was like, oh my God, people hate me. But it all, I feel like it has to do with the fact that maybe you don't like a type of video. Maybe you you um, dislike just one thing that I said in my video. Maybe you didn't like the audio. Maybe I had too loud music in the video. Like there's so many things. So I just feel like that is just a good way to be able to express yourself without me ever knowing who it is. Because sometimes if you, if you are a long time subscriber and you're a, a friend of mine, maybe you like me, maybe you like most of my videos, maybe you find it hard to critique me to say like with a comment being like, oh, I didn't like that, I didn't like that, because maybe you think that I would get mad at you, and I wouldn't, but I know a lot of other people would. So I just find it to be a great way to be able to like express yourself and just say, hey, I didn't like that. I think that that is wrong for them to do so, but I can't control it. So I am taking uh, the Auric Primer, this one, I have it in the shade Selenite, I think. Yes, Selenite. And then I also took the Pixi Rose Radiance Perfector because um, the Auric one is a little bit too thick for my liking. So I kind of just like to blend it out a little bit with that because that one is so liquidy and I just feel like it is the best concoction you could ever get. Or actually, I do prefer my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, but... I finished that, so once I'm ready and I have used up some of my primers, I will actually repurchase that, but I kind of have to wait. I'm also going to take my Becca Under Eye Corrector. I, I can't remember if they still sell this, but under Smashbox or what ended up happening with this one. Um, I kind of have to Google that. But the brand is no longer existing, but I do own it, so I'm going to finish it up. I have finished up one of these in the past. I do like it, but sometimes I feel like it can get a little bit too heavy. So what I like to do is kind of just to tap it out. And I also feel like it isn't my perfect color, and I do have another corrector, so I usually use that just on top of it. And I'll show you. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury corrector i don't know what it's called because mine is like looking this was like rose gold um and all of the print has worn off so i have it in the shade two and what i like to do is just to kind of take a little bit and just kind of stamp it on top of it where i have you know my blue lines i have by mistake almost finished up this foundation this one doesn't suck up anything so i kind of have to have it upside down and then kind of press everything out on my table. Um, this is the L'Oreal Hyaluronic Serum Foundation. But the shade is a little bit too deep for me, so what I end up doing is taking and mixing it with, let's see here, 
my NARS foundation. This is the uh, Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. And sometimes I do actually take a little bit of actual moisturizer as well in it. But today I think I'm gonna leave it like this. And then I'm just doing like so because I mix it with my hands. And then I'm just gonna apply it to my skin. I remember when I used to do my eyes first. That was a treat. Now I don't do that. I also like I have changed my makeup preference a lot from like if you go back a few years you can see that I used to do this super vibrant colorful makeup and I just don't really do that anymore. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that yes my preference has obviously changed but also I wake up as I've said like 4 30 in the morning and I could wake up at 4 to do my colorful makeup if I wanted to but I'm not gonna do that just to do my makeup so what I end up doing is something like super uh, neutral and something that I still feel pretty in uh, maybe I do a little bit of, of a wing maybe I do a little bit of like a shimmer on the crease or not in my crease on my lid I mean um, and I just feel super vib not vibrant I just feel super pretty in it so it's just that my preference has changed and I know a lot of you guys think that I'm so dull for not using my colorful makeup anymore but I also know that a lot of you guys likes it and that you have also been way more into neutrals and I, I don't know like I feel like you know our preference change all the time sometimes I love like a denim jacket or something like that and other seasons I'm like ugh, hate it would never wear it Maybe that was a bad example, but you know what I mean. Like, it's just like, sometimes I love like a mini skirt or something like that. And then other times I'm like, oh no, I would never. I think this combination is so, so pretty. I really like it. And I feel like it makes, it like looks like skin, but it looks like fresh skin. And me finishing up that foundation was just actually a mistake. I was not planning on doing so. It just ended up happening. I haven't even had it for that long so that's how much I've been reaching for it because I just love it it's just so fresh on the skin and it's so lightweight and it just looks so beautiful hands down my favorite foundation in my entire collection the L'Oreal one or Laurel <laughs> I would for sure repurchase but I have actually purchased two other foundations that I'm waiting to get so I'm not gonna repurchase it right now because I want to be able to finish some of my, my foundations up before I do so. Um, I'm thinking of starting like a new product pan, but yeah, the, it's, I just need to have the time in order to do so. Right now, when I have a little bit of time, I prioritize sitting down filming because it's been so nice talking to you guys and it's been so nice just to be back and, and chat with you. and. Um, a lot of you guys have like told me about what's going on in your life and I've just been so intrigued to hear it and I've been it's been so nice just to have a little bit of contact with you again and I've really been missing it I'm using my Anastasia uh, cream bronzer that I have in the shade golden tan and I try I know I have gone very heavy-handed with this in the past but I'm trying really hard just to do like light layers at this point because I feel like a lot a lot of the time it can look very, very harsh. And I just, I wanna go away from that a little bit. I don't know if I'm having like a brain fart or something, but I went off to do my brows but realized that I haven't done my concealer yet or my powder, so that's neat. So I'm gonna do that now. I love, love, love mixing these two concealers. This one is a little bit too dark. This one is a little bit too light. So this is the Anastasia concealer that I have in the shade 2. And what I end up doing is just like that. And then I just place a little bit of concealer. And, you know, speaking about, like, concealer, I am never using up concealers because I am... I never use a lot of concealer anyway <laughs> like in my day-to-day -day life now I put it on my nose and right here I don't do that in my day-to-day -day life 
um, which means that I'm using so little every single day that it's gonna take me years to finish up concealers especially with the amount of product they actually put in concealers nowadays but anyway I'm taking the Lancome concealer and I don't know which shade this is this is the Tint Idol ultra wear all over concealer I think it is 250 or 025 but it also says Bis W underneath it. So I honestly, I don't really know. So I just take a little bit like that just to kind of um, darken it up a little bit so it's not gonna be like super bright. I gotta tell you something. Um, so in my last, I don't know right now if it's my last video, but in my get ready with me that was kind of like the first video that i filmed for such a long time i think i named it there's no drama on my side uh, where i talked about like a bunch of different things uh, i'll link that video right up here in case you wanted to see it if you have missed it i took way too much concealer on my nose so i'm just gonna take this sponge and <laughs> blend it out a little bit uh but i talked about the fact that i had gained weight and going back and like editing that footage was hard. I could see so much in my face of how much weight I have gained and it was just so sad because I worked so fucking hard to lose all of that weight. I went to the gym like every single day, almost like five to six times a week. Okay, maybe some days, some weeks I went four times depending on how I was feeling. But I went all the freaking time and I lost so much and I was feeling so good about my body. Obviously, I still had a lot to lose, but it was still... Yeah, I was just feeling so good. And then going back and seeing that... Oh, fuck, the light is so off. I don't know if this is better. Uh, and then going back and seeing my face and how much I've actually gained. Like seeing my body is a whole nother thing. That's like a train wreck all in and of itself. But it was so, so sad just to see that because sometimes you see yourself in the mirror every single day, day, but you don't notice that. But then if you see a picture that someone has taken of you, or if you see, you know, a video of yourself, it's totally different. You're like, what the fuck happened? What did I do to myself? And that's kind of what ended up happening for me. So I feel like I'm a little bit more motivated to um, to pick it up right now and start going to the gym again. And then by the time you see this video, I have actually taken my test, like my rider test for my license and hopefully I passed. And if I did, I will be able to have way more time to do other shit. So I'm hoping. Good morning, my little snusmumrik. Hey, Siggies! Har du vaknat? Har du vaknat? Kom då! Åh, oh, vilken fin leksak du har! Jag vet! Du kanske inte behöver putta ner mitt puder som kostar 700 spänn. Ah? Ja. Mm. Ja, jag har det. Har du sovit gott? Nej, inte! Hur har du sovit då? Inte ens det. Ja. Sigge. So I'm gonna take my powder from Pat McGrath just under my eyes. I have ripped everything off right here, but it's just a translucent powder. So I'm just taking that on a little brush and then just patting it under my eyes. This is like a blurring powder and I do like it, but I don't love it. It's not a powder I would repurchase and it's just because most of the times when I'm using a powder under my eyes, I prefer a powder to have a little bit of like a coloring to it instead of being translucent. Um, just like a little bit of that yellow tint that my Fenty powder had, but it is a beautiful uh, powder in case you are looking for this kind of finish. And then I take a big powder brush. This is just a powder brush from Real Techniques. I'm gonna, and I'm, <laughs> I can't talk. And I'm gonna take my um, Hourglass powder. 
Speaking about the Fenty powder, I just kind of finished it up and that was nice. I think I had that for like three years. So insane. Yeah, but I just end up setting right here because here I can get very, um, it can crease a lot right here or transfer to my clothes. And then I actually take in my forehead as well. So I've started to use way more powder than I used to. I still love like a glowy skin, but I just feel like this makes my uh, skin look a little bit better throughout the day. And it just makes everything last a little bit more, but I don't go in with a ton of powder. It's just, you know, just a little bit. Get it done, come on. Oh, done in. Oy, oy, oy. So I was a little bit interrupted because Nicholas actually woke up. So we took the dog out, great for me. I usually do it, so. He was like, oh, you're filming, I'll do it. And I was like, oh, thank you. Um, I'm gonna take my Patrick Ta palette because I'm a boring neutral person. And I'm gonna take this shade. As you can see, I hit pan in this one and in this one. I just love them. I'm taking this on my What's Up Beauty Brush. This is R104. Cannot, for the life of me, stop using this one or these brushes from What's Up Beauty, they are so nice. And they have come out with a new collection and they actually asked me if they could send it to me and I was like, do. So they are. <laughs> really, really nice, looking forward to getting it, just to try it out. I really admire or adore their shimmer formula, so I can't wait to try it out and see what I like about it. So what I usually do is like, I take this in my crease and then I take one or two other mattes. Sometimes I go for like an all matte look and that's actually what I'm gonna do today. Um, I'm gonna take a shade right next to it, which is this one. So many of you asked me if I were going to purchase the new Patrick Ta palette and I am not. I think that it's beautiful and I really like this um, formula that he has. However, it's just like the color story isn't really my thing, so I feel like it's really, really unnecessary for me to end up like picking it up. Just because of the fact that I love his first palette so much, I know that I won't love his second palette as much just because of the fact that it isn't really my colors. So it's just a little bit unnecessary, and it's also very um, mid-tone. You know, I love my my deeps and my uh, light shades and my like highlight shades and whatnot. And I feel like I can't really do that with that. So I am not picking it up, but however, I am side eyeing everyone who has it because I feel like you are betraying me. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'm just, um, what's it called? I'm very envy of you. Now I'm gonna take this brush. This is from uh, BH Cosmetics. It's their marble collection. I ended up purchasing it like last year, maybe during Black Friday or even before that. Uh, but this is the BH Cosmetics number eight brush. And I'm actually gonna take my Vive uh, eyeshadow stick that I have in the shade Mahogany. And I'm just gonna, this is not something I do for like an everyday but I do like the fact that it is like a nice touch and I'm actually thinking of picking up her uh, sand color, I think it is. These are just so easy to blend out and they last the entire day and I just, I really like her shadow sticks. I did read that the shimmer shades wasn't as um, great because the shimmer kind of blended away or the color blended away and then you were just left with like a glittery eye almost, like not a glittery eye, but like a shimmery eye without the, uh, what's it called? W without like the color of it. So the shimmer sticks, I'm not really that into. I do have two shadows from Kiko that I really like that is in shimmer form. So I'm not really, I'm not really feeling picking those up, but I do, however, like I saw that she came up with brushes and I was like, Ooh, but they are expensive. I really want her foundation brush and I, the thing is I don't need brushes, but that's kind of a thing that can kind of get to me sometimes. And I like the fact that they were synthetic and I really admire Gen uh, Jamie Genevieve's um, makeup aesthetic. And I think that she has done a 
great job like coming up with her own brand that has also been very true to her and her makeup aesthetic which I think is really neat like she loves this super glam dark vampy makeups and I just think that she has created such a great brand that is really representative of her but also a little bit more fun in the beauty community like we don't have a lot of these like eyeshadow sticks so I feel like it's pretty fun instead of just you know wet and wild ColourPop, bh cosmetics and all of these brands just um coming out with eyeshadow palette after eyeshadow palette after eyeshadow palette that they know that no one is gonna want to buy like well they will but then they just kind of discontinue them and they don't put a lot of effort into them saying that i know that ColourPop. BH Cosmetics and all of these brands has some amazing formula and they sometimes come up with these amazing uh, color stories so that's not what I mean but it's just like you know a lot of the times if you come out with a palette like or a collection rather I should say like five times a month I feel like that there hasn't really been that much thought and that much love put into the collection um, I don't feel like they have kind of tested it out too too much i actually saw like a docu documentary no i actually saw a it was like behind the scenes with ColourPop or whatever this is a while ago so i can't remember who uploaded it or where i saw it but where ColourPop basically said that you know we we can make a collection happen in like two days and that just kind of made me like <gasps> wow that's why it's hit or miss <laughs> you're lucky when the eyeshadow palettes and the lipsticks are coming out correctly i am also gonna do like a really smoky uh wing or like a, not a smoky wing i'm gonna go do a blown out wing but i'm also taking this just a little bit under my eyes just to get that like vampy effect and this is totally like a jamie genevieve kind of look she does it a little bit better than me and uh, she's way prettier but I'm just kind of a little bit inspired by her and eyeshadow doesn't have to be super tricky and using a lot of different colors and whatnot to make it look beautiful like I really really feel like this is just looking very very beautiful then I'm just gonna take what's left on this brush and kind of just blend it out just to get a little bit more dimension and then we're gonna do a wing so I take the, my favorite uh, eyeliner. I've had this, not this specific one, but I've used the same eyeliner for over 12 years. It's the Isadora Colorful Eye Color Eyeliner. Colorful Eyeliner in the shade 10 Black. I don't know why it's called Colorful Eyeliner because they have like a black and a brown. <laughs> but this eyeliner is absolutely beautiful. It's so easy to work with. It's long lasting and all of that. And yeah, they have like one uh, that is shiny and one that is matte as well. But I am just gonna start doing this. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Maybe I should zoom you guys in a little bit more. Now I felt like that I got it on my lashes. So I just drag it off and then I smeared everything out. So that's great. Oh wow, this just keeps getting better and better. Here's my tutorial on how I fuck up. And then I do it pretty big. And then... I just drag it out. And then just connect it. So I did my mascara as well and when I have my mascara on you can see that the wing isn't as, it doesn't look as big because I have lashes that covers it up and I feel like it is way more cohesive but it is still a pretty big wing but I like that. So I'm gonna take my Jouer bronzer, I think I'm gonna try and pan this this year. This one I will be able to finish up but this one perhaps not but I go in and I actually have like a brush that I love. This is actually from Technic. It's a great brush. I don't know what it's called because it doesn't have any labels on it, but I love it as like both a powder brush and a bronzer brush. So just go in with that. And again, I try to have like thin, thin layers because I've been loving that, but 
I have a hard time because bronzer is something that I really enjoy. So a lot of the times I feel like I go way more heavy with my bronzer than I actually need to. It's hard, you know, trying to be a little bit more careful, but then loving something so much that you kind of go heavy-handed anyway. Then an oldie but a goodie is the Natasha Denona Bloom Palette. I have fallen back in love with this one and I love mixing these two shades and this brush I use. So I just go pretty heavy-handed and then I mix it into this shade. And then, because this is so pigmented, I actually take a piece of paper and I try to remove a lot of the product because otherwise I will just look clownish. And it doesn't matter if you just dip in a little bit, you will have too much blush. As you can see, like that's a lot of pigment. And this one actually acts like a matte, even though it is a cream, so that's pretty neat. Like it doesn't look too glowy and um, if that's not what you're going for, then yeah, I just, I, I just love it. <laughs> and then I take just a little bit on my nose, like right up here. I will also go in with my bronzer brush just to kind of blend the two together a little bit more. And sometimes, whoops, sometimes I even go in with my sponge just to make them blend in a little bit better together. And then I've been loving my Nabla highlights. So I'm gonna take this one. I have it in the shade Ozone. <laughs> Ozone? Ozone. I've wanted to purchase and highlight so much lately. I don't know why, because when I think about it, I'm like, oh, I finished the Jouer highlight, so I'm able to treat myself. But then I think about all the highlights I have, and also, it doesn't look that different on the skin, so I try to just stay away from it, but sometimes I just have the urge to buy something new. And then I'm also gonna take this in my uh, inner corners. And for my lips, I think we're gonna do like a 90s kind of lip. So I'm gonna take the MAC lip liner in cork. So when I've done that, pretty sloppy, I'm gonna take my lip liner in the shade Subculture, also from MAC. I need to sharpen this. This just makes it uh, a little bit, not as brown uh, and not as harsh lines. And then I'm gonna take my uh, lipstick from MAC in the shade Flesh Pod. So let me fix my hair and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the finished result. I am now done. I just curled my hair really, really quick. I feel like I need to curl here again, but I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, some hoops, a new shirt, and that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though like I wasn't super creative with my eyes. This is just something I really like to wear or sometimes even like, a lot lighter but just focusing on the wing and just doing something a little bit more fun like the video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't like it don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye